Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's it's quite unusual, but I will start before. Okay, I will start before because, of course, people are standing up. Okay, so uh, before we we start, uh, um, I just uh, want to let you know. For I will present, of course, in English. Mas eu sou brasileiro e falo português também. Okay, so I can speak in Portuguese and English. Tairu can speak in French and English. Chin Chin on the back. Chinese and English, okay? So during the exercise, so if you have any, any question, just let us know. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Ricardo. Um, I'm the executive director of Brightline uh, and will be conducting this, this workshop today. We are doing um, a big partnership with Web Summit on several things and, and one of the reasons uh, for us is to get the opportunity to share with us some of the thoughts around Brightline. Uh, the first thing I want you to make aware, uh, make you aware, is that we don't sell anything. We are non-commercial, so don't expect any pe sales speech and anything. So Brightline is non-commercial, fully funded. Okay, so we'll understand why we want you here and what do we want to share with you. And, and I will start by telling you a number that uh, always scares me. Um, around every 20 seconds, around a million dollars is wasted globally due to the poor implementation of strategy. Let me explain this again. Every 20 seconds, a million dollars is just wasted. Why? Because people do not have the ability to transform ideas into reality. Take things out of the paper. Uh, let, let me tell you, I'm not concerned, and I don't want to say that put things on paper is easy. Having ideas is very hard. But bringing ideas to life, it's what really creates impact. If you want to create impact, you need to take and bring ideas to life. And this is exactly what Brightline is about. Every year, $2 trillion is wasted. $2 trillion. So as a Brazilian, this is a little bit more than the GDP of Brazil. So imagine every year you destroy one Brazil, of one Brazilian economy. You know, if I ask you, each of you can tell me a hundred things that never happened and people try to implement. Imagine on the political arena, just, just to, how many times you saw a politician during the election time saying, I will do this, and then time passed and things do not happen. And it's not necessary because you don't have money. It's because of a lot of things. So what is Brightline? Brightline is a not-for-profit, non-commercial initiative of leading organizations. And then you may ask me, which are the leading organizations? So if you go to our website today, you'll see three names, but I will disclose to you today four others uh, names. But basically, a Brightline was initially created by the Project Management Institute together with the Boston Consulting Group and Agile Alliance that was one of the creators of the Agile Manifesto. And Right now, it was not announced because it will be announced at the end of the month. MIT, University of Tokyo, the Danish Technology University, and Bristol Myers Cube joined uh, the coalition, uh, representing an industry partner and academic partner. Um, and next, not this Monday, but the Monday after, I'm in Saudi Arabia signing with Saudi Telecom the telecom company, and we have orders coming, so the end stage of the collision will be around 10 organizations, okay? And we are looking for diversity, geographically, and on business. This is why I'm talking about University of Tokyo, Saudi Telecom, and Bristol Myers Group, because we want to represent different sectors of the society. And basically, what do we aim? We aim just to understand why we should care about this strategy gap? Why should we care? Why we, we saw this morning, uh, I was uh, on Facebook Live of Web Summit, and, and they asked me, why nine out, out of 10 startups fail? 
Why nine of ten out of ten? And I know many of you are. So what's going on? And maybe you have a great idea, but how hard is to bring these ideas to life? So I want to show you a quick video uh, to you just to start our discussion here in this workshop. To build a great business strategy, we begin by asking questions. At the end of that process, we end up with answers. We point those answers at the future and we call it strategy. Case closed? Not quite. In a survey of leading global organizations, 9 of 10 respondents reported not achieving all of their strategic goals. That's a lot of missed marks, hundreds of millions of dollars worth. Perhaps strategies fail because, when it comes time to execute, leaders aren't asking the right questions. Questions like, who is accountable for strategy execution? Are design and delivery siloed? Or are they intertwined? Does strategy delivery connect back to strategy design? Do the people tasked with bringing it to life understand and agree with it? Is our strategy simple, bold, and focused? Are we flexible? Can we adapt to change? Does our plan account for rapid feedback from customers and competitors alike? Is this working? And if the answer is no, are we failing? Or are we failing to learn fast enough? Is business strategy only about finding the right answers? Or is it also about asking the right questions every step of the way? This movie was uh, produced by Ted in partnership with, um, with Brightline. And this was uh, released on 17th of October when we sponsored TED NYC. And the basic uh, uh, message of this is nine out of 10 fail. If you want to see on this envelope that is yours, you have the report of the economist. We commissioned the Economist Intelligence Unit to do a research with 500 C-level executives globally to try to understand what is going on. Nine out of 10. So you, you have so many examples of that. And what we saw also, we saw that 20% of all initiatives, they fail due to poor implementation. It's your inability to do things. Your organization inability to do things. And I want to use one example that I mentioned uh, recently about self-driven cars. So when we think about self-driven cars, the first thing you have in your mind, it's the technology. W how the technology will be to drive the car, to, to do this, you know, to, to guide and uh, with safety and this. Yes, this is a big, big point to make this happen. Yes, but it's not enough. There is a huge challenges on cultural aspects, legal aspects. If your self-driven car hits someone and kills someone, who will go to jail? The car? The robot? You know, so it's just a very simple example. And I gave a second example that I want to share with you today. Uber. What is the biggest challenge of the CEO of Uber today? Is so oh, our app is lousy. Our app is not good. You know, the app is the smallest problem they have. They have a massive issues on legal aspects. Uh, uh, workers' rights, whatever. That is all part of that implementation. So Uber, the biggest challenge of Uber today are not necessarily the technology behind, but a set of aspects that they need to care, right? London recently uh, 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 said that Uber cannot work in London. Today, I saw on my, my, my phone, probably all of you, saying that there is a planet strike of Uber between four and six today. Here. You know, so look, it's above and beyond. So these are a key challenges. So how you can make your ideas work. And also, two out of three senior executives, they say that strategy falls short because of failure of understanding the organization, the environment, and the ability to execute. So for example, blockchain. I was yesterday, no, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, in a summit of blockchain. 
And look, I, I'm a chemical engineer, okay? I know a little bit of technology, but it's very hard for me to understand how, oh, let's create a currency. And then we two together create something and we create a currency. And then the crazy thing, someone buys it, right? And make money out of that. It, it's different, right? And most of the challenges are not technology based. It's how you regulate all this market, you know, of being manipulated. This is a just a very simple example. So what Brightline does? Brightline does three basic things. First one, we sponsor and support research. So we commission the economists, we commission MIT to do research, to have more knowledge about this. Second one is what we call networking, and this is why I'm here today. So I don't want anything else, but I want you to leave here saying, oh God, I need to think about how I'll make things happen. It's not just having great ideas. So this networking. And the third one is capability building. We we'll are releasing a massive open online course, executive, a lot of products around that that will be available for free. Everything on the site is free. You don't need even to log in. You just go there and download, okay? So it's exactly what we want. We aim to close this gap. These organizations decided to close this gap. And one of the products we did, it's something like Quick Win, we said, Let's take this collective knowledge. So we invited around 15 to 20 people to start working together and say, if you need to give an advice to senior executives, to leaders in your organizations about bridging this gap, which would be these advices? And then we came up with 10 guiding principles. So 10 Simple, quite obvious advices that we want to make sure. And who, who is the target of this advice? Senior executives, leaders, those who are responsible for creating this strategy. Okay? First one, you need to understand that delivery is as important as design. Let me explain this to you it's in a very simple way. Design is much funnier. It's nice. It's much cool to talk about design than delivery. You know, it's cool to say, oh, I'm planning to do this, I'm planning to do that. The execution or the delivery is what hurt, right? One thing it's, you will let me draw my new house. The other thing it's, okay, where is the brick? And let's do it. So what happened? We need to understand that the executive is as responsible uh, uh, for the delivery as he or she should be on the design. So we need to understand. And this goes to my second principle. Accept that you are accountable for delivering this strategy. And now let me tell you one thing that is very clear in my mind on that. Most of the senior executives, they are accountable for envisioning the future, but not by making the future real. Right? By not by, so you receive your bonus, your promotion by one idea you sold, but not about the reality of delivering. So you need to understand that you need to restructure your benefit system to make sure that people deliver on their promises. Otherwise, they only promise. Political, political parties, it's a good example. Candidates, right? The candidate, when you vote for someone, what are you voting for? You are voting for a strategy, right? You vote on me because I plan to do this, I plan to change this, I plan to change that. What happened? When she or he is elected, then you need to deliver. What happens in reality in three, four, five years? Most of what was promised just do not happen, right? And not necessarily because there is no money. It's because it's a much broader problem. 
And most of the time, we only plan on perfect conditions. You know, we plan, imagine that everything will happen, uh, will happen in a positive way. The second one also shows, sorry, the research on this topic also show us 62% of senior executives, they don't see this as a strategic task. So, for example, if you work on the execution side, let's suppose you are a software developer, and people talk to the CEO, CEO thinks what? All software development? I don't care, I envision the future of this business. I say, but, but who, who, who does the work? Right? It's, it's like you were a chef. What do you do? I think about the foods. Okay, but what happened with your guests at the restaurant? Uh, they will sit and say, think about the food you have. And now this is the bill. Someone needs to do the work, right? Someone needs to do the work. So 62% thought about that. 62. And I can tell this for my own life. For example, I was for four years director for project management at the UN. So I had the opportunity to work on delivering some of these projects. And look, it's so crazy because people promise things that they are not able to do. You know, one thing is to, for you to say, oh, let's put light on that 34 refugee camps. The other thing is say, do it now. And then you say, oh, how do I move 35 containers to the board of Iraq and Iran to get inside? Everyone knows that. How do I do that? Imagine, it's easy, right? Imagine, for example, like uh, our team were responsible for the removal of chemical weapons in Syria. Oh, it's very easy. Just go there, take everything. You come with dynam uh, TNT, you explode, you put cement, and you leave. Oh, very easy. Do that. Go there. Go there inside of the Islamic State. We lost six lives on that. So, you know, it's, it, you know, having an idea, I'm saying in New York or somewhere, and saying, oh, now, you know, a, a, this is the connection we aim to do here. So now I will move to my friend, Tairu, that will work with you on the next ones. Perfect. And then the third then uh, principle is basically to dedicate and mobilize the right resources. <coughs> you know, sometimes people, again, design their strategy, but they don't want actually to assign the proper resources. And first, the financial one. They can design their strategy and say, okay, this strategy will cost me two million, for example. Then they are not willing to put the fund necessarily to actually implement the strategy. The second one, when I talk about resources, not only money, but also having the right people, putting the right resources, so that actually what people are designing can be implemented. The next one is, and that's when I find it very, very important, leveraging insight from customers and also competitors. Anyone from North America here in the room? A few, North America, Canada, US? Mexico, right? <laughs> yeah? Right? If you think about a few years back, Blockbuster, does it say anything to you? Hmm? You remember going to the movie, to the store, getting the videos, and then coming back home, start watching it? Where is Blockbuster now? Hmm? Don't see many of them, right? Last, last, last month when we were in New York, actually, Mark Randolph, the, the former co founder of uh, Netflix, was saying the idea of Blockbuster, actually, it was one day they were kind of going on a trip, and then one of their colleagues actually had to return the DVD. And they were like, oh, how easy would it be if they could have actually, I mean, watched the movie and not have to return it? And that was basically what created the spark. And then, of course, here, here we are, we can sit in our room and starting watching movies without necessarily having to move. But what happened to the guys that don't look? and that does look at what is happening outside, you can easily get take over. Think about Kodak. You know, we all have our iPhone now, right? Where is Kodak? Hmm? So, and now when you start thinking about, I mean, in the technology industry, you think about AI, you're thinking about, again, Bitcoin. Think about what could happen in the future, right? And then if I was to take the self-driving cars as an example, and trying to apply it maybe to the trucking industry because now they're starting producing, I mean, uh, trucks that can be self-driving. 
what will happen to those companies if they don't start, again, looking at what is happening and start making some small shift so that actually they can adapt their strategy to the changing environment. Think about iTunes, you know, the music industry now. I, I remember going to, to, to a store, D, D, uh, DHM, trying to get the CDs and this kind of a tweak. You don't need to, you, you don't even think about the CD. We don't have our <laughs> nice uh, things on our, our ears and trying to basically listen to music. Organizations, they need to be able to know and gauge what is changing and adapting. That's about competitors. But at the same time, we need to have the same thing for customers. You know, the sales representatives, they tend to be very close to the customers. Sometimes they are not at the table when people discuss strategy. But we need to know what the customer needs so that we can adapt and provide them exactly what they're looking for. So one other thing is uh, related to the uh, sales, salespeople. Sometimes, actually, in the organization, there is someone that has that insight. But that insight does not go in the right hand. And then there is no leverage taken out of it. Now, we were talking about the studies that we did with the economists. For that study, uh, about 500 executives were surveyed. 50% of them were C-suits. And we were trying to understand, again, what they're doing right. And you'll see that there are two numbers here. The orange one represents organizations that we call leaders the ones that are doing very well, basically executing all the strategic objectives and achieving them. What we see is 50% of them tend to actually get information re related to changing customer needs. So they're always listening to the voice of the customers and adapting and making the changes required. And then if you take also the survey, we'll show that 54% of these leading company also continue to gather the changing environment and what is happening for, for the competition so that they can stay in business out of, instead of going out. Next one is we said be bold, stay focused, and keep it simple as possible, as simple as possible. You know, there is no need to complicate things. When you see, when you have a problem and then you see that you need many layers to get it done, maybe you need to step back. And you need to surround yourself also with people that will help you simplify your strategy and then get it done. Because you don't want a, theory, a lot of theories for a long time. At some time, you need to move and get, uh, and get uh, the, the work done. And when we talk about simpl simplifying as well, sometimes there are threats, there are opportunities. You need people who that will come in, helping you get the entire spectrum, and then basically say, OK, this is how we go, and then you get this thing done. I'll let you continue, Ricardo. Thank you. Thanks, Jairo. So. Just to explain to you what is our strategy, we'll present this and then we'll do a small case, okay, together here to, to, to see how we can put this uh, to work. Be bold, stay focused, and keep it as simple. This uh, Tyru just presented to you, I want just to highlight one thing. Make things complex is easy. What is hard is to make things simple, right? I remember when I was a student, uh, the, 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 the teachers, they would love to say very complicated things because then you leave and say, oh, this professor is so good because I stayed there one hour and I didn't get anything. So he's, so, uh, but today it's, it's different. It's absolutely the opposite. So promote team engagement and effective cross-business cooperation. Let me tell you, one of the biggest challenges on implementing strategy, mostly for medium, large, and very large enterprise, is silos. Silos. The organization has departments like groups. And, and the basic instinct of this group is what? Self-preservation. So imagine that I say, I will do a massive transformation. And this massive transformation will finish your area. What is your first reaction? This strategy is wrong. It, it doesn't matter. This strategy is wrong. So how you can create a model of cross-cooperation? How you can create a model that people become more fluid to work on that? I was in New York. To three, four Saturday, okay, 
And I was with the head of strategy of Lee Hatch Harrison. Uh, it's one of the biggest uh, HR consulting firms that belongs to ADECO, the very big outsourcing company. And you know, one of the biggest challenges of any transformation project is how you can create a cooperation model. Because let's suppose you are expert on building traditional cars. Okay, you work for Volkswagen. And then we say, now we need to disrupt that. Your first reaction is self-preservation. Say, now I know that I'm fit for business. But I don't know in the future. So what is your first reaction? This will not happen. I will not make it happen. And this, for example, Blockbuster, probably, I, I was not there, was thinking like that. So this is the thinking that we need to do. So how we can create this? And how you create incentives that are cross-functional incentives. For example, uh, uh, one, one good example of this. The sale guys want to sell. Uh, who works here in software development for, for other organizations? You develop software that sells. Two, three, okay, you, I'm talking to you. What happened with the sales guy of your company? He sells dreams. You administer a nightmare, right? Because the sales guy say, can, can your software do that? Yes. Oh, can you deliver in half of the time? Yes. Can you do, the guy just wants to sign because he will make the money and you need to deliver. So this is a cross-cooperation environment. Uh, look, some, some numbers here. Who does design and who does deliver work together? So great awareness of the challenges. So the high performers, the leaders, they have much higher awareness. They consider organization ability to implement. They, the designers and implementers work together. You know, the guy that is designing, the guy that's implementing. And last, those who design the strategy, they oversee the implementation. Means, look, sales guy, if you do not deliver, it's your problem. It's your problem is not just sell. I'm just saying it's not just sell that idea. Seven, demonstrate bias towards decision making and own the decision. Look, people do not like to decide. Because decision hurts, because if you're wrong, then, then it hurts. So you need to, all the leading organizations, they decide. They decide fast, and they own the decisions they make. They own. When they decide something, they own, even if it's not the best decision. Eight, check on going, oh, this is perfect. Check on going initiatives before you start new ones. You know, there is a lot of people on the marketplace today that became experts on selling ideas but not implementing them you know we're talking about powerpoint masters right so you you do something you sell but you you commit to another one and then you just start things and you never get them done and look nine develop robust plans so what i'm saying the leading organizations that deliver well they have very robust plans. They do project management, but they allow for missteps and they fail fast to learn fast. Maybe, look, for those who are startups here, this is something not new because the startup mindset is fail fast. But imagine a large organization. Large organizations hate failure. They hate failure. They never recognize failure. They hate because it's not culturally acceptable. But if you are a startup, oh, it didn't work. You just shift and, and move. But for large organizations, they never, it's very unusual that, okay, a company, oh, I'm saying like Apple or like Amazon, a leading company, or they come and say, that project, nah, it didn't work the way we wanted. That strategy didn't work. It's very unusual, right? It's very because people do not have this mindset. So leading organizations, okay, they always try to do that. And it's not easy. It's one of the most critical. And also, it's a culturally related thing. Some countries, they accept much more. Some countries, they don't accept. Failure is, is a very strong thing. Look. Leaders act fast, so go into that. Rapid adjustment of, uh, of the strategy. So if they see something going, 
they move their strategy. They change it fast. Second, they change personnel. They move personnel. For example, I have an 18-year-old daughter and a 13. Let me just use this as an example. And of course, she, she asked me all the time, Dad, what is the trend? What's, what's the, you know, what I should focus? And I say, you should focus on very strong foundations and be flexible to apply your foundations in different businesses. Because I don't know what the future of work will be 20 years from now. Uh, I was reading recently this uh, quantum computer. Let me tell you, I was reading close to his lip. I stop it and I say, I cannot because I will have a nightmare tonight. Because that, that article I read, I think it was on New York Times, I said, I lost my job and everybody else lost the jobs. We will be 7 billion of people who are looking to each other. Because, and are we really living in a simulation? You know, it's like Matrix. You know, I'm, I'm saying, I started questioning that. You know, because the numbers are just, you know, they are, uh, this quantum computer is just 100 times more smart than the smartest guy. So, you know, and this is just the first version. So uh, imagine how the future will look. So you need to relocate. So these are the flexibility and reallocation of money. You move the money much faster among different initiatives and different strategies. And last but definitely not least, celebrate the results. So what is happening? We live in such a fast paced things. Things are moving so fast that we don't have time to celebrate those working on the strategy we developed two years ago. Let me ask you, if you work in a large company, try to remember the strategy of your organization three years ago. People just don't remember that. I'm, I'm just using this as a very simple, people don't remember that because it's one strategy uh, like uh, who works here in large companies? I'm saying large means above a thousand people. I'm, okay. When was your last restructuring? Okay. And when it's the next? Oh, few weeks ahead. It, it, you are in a permanent restructuring. It's permanent. It's not like, a, oh, let's restructure and let's be peaceful. No, it's let's restructure and then let's restructure. Because it's like that today. It's much more volatile. So then what happened? You, don't, you just start forgetting the past. And people need to be motivated. Uh, we, one of the works we are doing with Lich Hat Harrison is how we can create incentives for people. I'm not saying money, but how you create incentives to, for people to engage on change. Because honestly speaking, we hate change. We love talking about change. But we hate change. We hate and say, oh, this company is low. We need to be fast and this. And if someone say, no, uh, but not too fast. You know, because then you start seeing the impact on your own life. This is natural. This is human behavior. So now, what I want, I presented to you, of course, it's, uh, it's very quick. I presented to you this temporary post. So now we'll do a very quick reflection of that, okay? So what is our workshop now? We will spend some time together just discussing one thing. I'm presenting to you a case now. Tyru is distributing to you a case. This case, I, I, I use it, a very common case. It's Tesla. It's Tesla about Tesla strategy. It's a quite interesting reading. So I want you to take a look on this case, okay? Most of this info, all this information is public, but most of them you, you probably already know. Then you have on the, on the envelope, um, um, excuse me, here you have uh, this one, I want this one. You have the guiding principles here. This is yours, you have this. Take the guiding principles and look, uh, on the Tesla, I want you to partner with two or three other, maybe three, uh, we are a little bit full today, but maybe three, four. So your colleagues, spend time introducing yourself to your colleague because it's a networking moment also. You, you don't ne necessarily know each other. And then you want, I want you to do two works here, two. First one, okay, you will select three principles out of this 10 that you want to explore more 
for for uh, um, for Tesla. Okay, so you pick any of them. Okay, but don't pick the easy ones for you. T try to pick a more challenging one. And then what I want you to do and say if Elon Musk is in front of you now, based on this and based, which would be your advice to him? vis-a-vis -vis this principle, which kind of actions can he put in place to meet that principle, okay? To meet that specific principle, okay? Which kind of actions you will help him to get insights of competitors and clients? Which kind of insights you will give to him to on the fail fast uh, approach, on decision make? Which kind of advice? It can be any kind of advice. And then we will invite uh, 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 maybe two or three groups, okay, the, the two or three that raise their hands first, to share their experience with the group and, and share their opinion. And I will give, I have a gift for these groups just to stimulate you to do that. Um, this book is absolutely the first time we have in hands. This is a Brightline and Thinkers 50 book that will be released next Monday in London. So this book does not exist yet. Uh, these are my copies I brought here. Uh, so this book is a collection of papers on strategy execution. And this book okay, will be available in EPUB, um, PDF, and MOBI format at our website Monday night, okay? Monday night, absolutely free, okay? Uh, absolutely free, so you just download, and if you don't like, just delete it, okay? So uh, so this will be for those, I have 10 books here, so it's, it's quite limited, okay? It's quite limited. So now I want you to get together with a small group. This will be fast, okay? So it will be fast. So just decide on the principles, Apply the principles and take a look on the case. Okay, thank you. Ideally, you'll be forming a group of three or four. So maybe three sitting four, around, yeah. yeah, three or four people per group. And I know some people were asking for the guiding principles, and we ran out of copies, okay. but they are available for free on our website. Okay. So. Uh, folks, may, may I have your attention for, for just 30 seconds? Just stop and listen to me. I, I want just to, to talk about this case, okay? In a very, very simple way. What was the strategy of Tesla? Okay, in a very simple. They said, let's start with a big, sport, luxurious, expensive car. Let's make this brand a nice brand, a nice product, and then we'll sell. By making money with this fancy car, the profits, what we'll do? We'll do one level below. We'll make a little bit cheaper car, but nice, cool, cheaper, more affordable, and with a bigger scale, I will sell more of this car. Then with the profit of the second line, second phase of my strategy, I will do what? I will do a cheaper one, more simple one, and do more of them. Okay, and then I will contaminate and, and get to the market by the top to bottom. So. Selling a, a, a big model, a second, and a third. And in parallel to that, I will start using the technology that I have in batteries to do different things on batteries, like powering houses and doing other things around battery and energy. So this is their strategy. So if I am Elon Musk, which kind of advice would you do to me, for example, to check on going initiatives before committing to new ones. So which kind of advice? Okay? For example, one thing that I, I, I don't want to answer for you, but I'm a little bit concerned is that 
it's not too broad to work on batteries for houses and batteries for cars. I'm, I'm just thinking out, which kind of advice would you do? Which kind of advice that you do about right resources? Which advice would you do about competitors? Right? I don't want to give you the answer, but which kind of advice would you give uh, uh, to him? I will give you more information about Tesla as we discuss, but think about that. So if you need to give an advice, what he, uh, Elon Musk should be concerned of in order to do that? And we know recently that he's facing challenges on this plan. Very big challenge. I don't want to tell you which ones. They are public because I don't want to influence your answer. But I will say them in a minute. Okay? Now, work quickly, fast on, on getting these answers, and we'll share soon. Okay? Okay, okay. So, uh, look, um, what I want is that you learn uh, the process of asking this question. So, it doesn't matter. It can be your business. It can be your company, uh, uh, your strategy, okay? So, now what I want, I want to, to invite, I know everybody wants to talk, okay? But I need just a few people to talk. So, just to stand up and present what you discuss it, the principles and the actions, mainly the actions. So who wants to start? Okay, so one and two, okay? Don't, don't, no problem, one and two. So you, you start, just stand up, say your name, okay? Say your name to the group, where are you from, okay? You have, oh, or you, okay, or you, uh, just introduce yourself. So this is, they both want to say, so. <laughs> you can say the, 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 I'm was raised on my behalf, so uh, that's <laughs> great. Thank you. Johan from uh, Dittmar in Denmark. Uh, we uh, discussed one. And that's great. We'll welcome you. Fantastic. Uh, we, we discussed one uh, principles, principle, and we selected number eight, check ongoing initiatives before committing to new ones. Um, and, and the two actions we uh, we decided on was to make the the seal. We, we just uh, we don't know too much about Tesla's inner workings, but we thought it would be a great idea for the C level of the uh, corporation uh, to focus on some metrics, not only on innovation initiatives and forward-looking strategies and developing new models, but also on the current state of production, quality, current customers customer satisfaction, how the production is running, and, and metrics and KPIs like that. Um, so shifting the, the focus. And our second action would be, and we just we uh, envisioned that there would be, uh, like, if, if there was room in the uh, organization for three major launches of something new during a year, uh, instead of having three new things, they would commit to launching two new things and one improvement of an existing uh, thing. So that was how far we got. Thank you. Thank you. Your group, uh, three people? You, four, okay. So, for you, okay. Now your group. Hi, hi. My Hi, my name is Victoria, and we came up with three as well. I'm from originally from Venezuela. Yeah. Um, so we have be bold, stay focused, and keep simple as the first thing. Um, because um, so we, I think, yeah, you want to go? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm Daisy. Um, I'm from China originally, and I'm working in Netherlands right now. So, uh, yeah, the first one is that uh, I think we really want to highlight the stay focused because, okay, so right now um, the goal is a little bit, it's not like very straight, s straightforward and then not everybody understands it. It's their um, secret master plan. And then when they start producing sports cards and when um, it starts to making a lot of money, uh, they need to remember, okay, so our 
ultimate goal is actually to produce um, affordable cars for 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 massive uh, audience, not just to make money. And as that that would be the end of the goal. So so it is really remember where you're from, and then stay focused. So then the other one, do we do the three of them? Yeah. Okay, so the other one was uh, leverage insight on customers and competitors because it is a very fast-paced uh, market and there's all these new things happening. So they're in the sports cars now, they're, all, they're doing all this other stuff. Their goal is to go into the, uh, the family ones that are affordable, but then you have Prius and other companies that we can see here that are really working on things like that. So they have to really keep in touch with what's coming up, what are customers wanting, and if they create something that actually is gonna go to that end goal, is it gonna be suitable for the customers? And then lastly, check ongoing initiative uh, before committing to new ones, which um, I think that's one a problem with uh, Tesla. So they're like, uh, yeah, we're doing this. Um, they were gonna do the release in India and then they kept postponing it. Um, and then he was kind of going back and forth in like, yeah, 2017, 2018. So kind of like, that's a when are you gonna do it? And if you're gonna do it, do it. Um, and now the, they have like a challenge of a 100 days battery. So where are you going with this? So if you're gonna do something, you promise and commit and do it. Um, otherwise it's gonna hurt your reputation. And I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I want just to make uh, one comment, just building on on what he, what she said uh, about about committing and and competitors. Sorry about competitors. So what what is happening? Let let's look. I'm not expert on Tesla, okay? But but let's try to understand uh, this principle vis-a-vis -vis Tesla. Tesla had a very strong advantage comparing with the traditional. Why? Because they were smaller, they were faster, and they came with something quite innovative, a full electric car, right? But what is happening over time? That, that advantage, that really is shrinking, right? What is happening? The big, the giant automotive industries are catching up in a very decent pace, right? In a very decent pace. So if Tesla cannot run the cycle of adding value, they will face massive trouble very soon. I'm saying because the, the traditional ones are catching up. So if you see, if you go outside, BMW is there, you know, you, you see a lot of advancement. There is a lot of inexpensive electrical cars. I'm saying a lot, I'm saying, you know, it's, it's, it's growing and it's growing very, and maybe two years from now, it's more and more. So they need to be very aware of that. There is one case on the case study on the red, uh, the red that is about Volkswagen. It's called two speed strategy. So what Volkswagen did, what is the problem? What was the key advantage of Tesla? Let me tell you, who is this startup now? Who is uh, uh, leading uh, or working in a startup? Oh, just two? Just three? Okay, four? Okay. <coughs> okay, few of you. What's the key advantage of Tesla or a startup? It's because you are fast. Why? Because you don't have a structured process. I'm saying, you, you just do it. You know, you just do it. You want to develop, you sit and, and develop. Tesla was like that, and this is what brings a very high speed. So Volkswagen does not have this high speed. So what they did, they create a two-speed engine. They create like two Volkswagen. One Volkswagen is traditional one, and they talk about automotive industry, and they work on improvement of current products. So they want to think about what is the car in 2019, 2020. And then they create a small piece of, of Volkswagen that is the disruptive Volkswagen. And this group is taking care about mobility. They, they are thinking out of the box. They are not thinking about car. They are thinking about how I can make people move from one place to another. So they are creating a whole different structure. And why they are creating? Because the current model of Volkswagen 
is not able to compete with a startup. The biggest advantage of any startup is that Netflix, uh, you, you, Tyro used a perfect example. Mark Randolph was in our event in, in New York. This is, by the way, on our YouTube channel. You can watch and listen to what he said. He said, do you know how Netflix happened? We were on a car, a car pulling, going to, the, to work. We are sharing the car. And then one of them had to, to return a tape. And then say, ah, oh, the returning tape sucks. And we need to find a way that people can ship in a simple way. Then Netflix was born. I'm, I'm just saying, how disruptive. Why, why Blockbuster did not have this idea? I'm just saying, because when you are big, it's, it's, it's hard for you to move. I'm just saying, so this is a big, so Tesla is has some advantages, but it's facing a massive challenge. One thing that I didn't hear, I didn't hear, but probably some of you in the, the section before did, I want to share with you. Number uh, uh, nine, fail fast to learn fast. This is a big problem. Let me talk about Tesla. If you go to Tesla stocks, Tesla faced a dramatic hit. 10 days ago or 15 days ago. And it's all, oh, if you go to Bloomberg and check that. What was the problem? Is that it's not anything with the strategy, but it's everything with the implementation. What is happening? Their model works only if you reduce the price and increase the sales. What is happening with the model X? What is the, the this? No. Model 3, with Model 3, they have a product that is cheaper, but they cannot produce the car. So they, they have something that you sell for less, and they were expecting to produce more. But because they have very weak experience in assembly line, and how do, do they set up that, what's happening? They, they are struggling. For example, if you want to buy a product like that, you wait. Months and months to get one. And they are losing revenue because the other competitors are moving dramatically fast. So I'm just saying, and then a lot of people said, I think that Tesla is not able to make their strategy work. This happened two weeks ago. What, what is the challenge now on Elon Musk? So what Elon Musk must know now, it's what went wrong? Acknowledge and fix it. Fix it, you know, very, very quick. The problem is not to do the mistake. The problem is when you take too long to detect that you are on the wrong path. So this is the bit. What happened if Tesla does not show a quick reaction on that piece? What will happen? Trust me, two years from now, Tesla is over. It's over. They will be bought by someone. Please. That is a, absolutely a great, I'm not an expert on this business, but it's a great advice. But what you said. Uh, yep. the, airline, the airline industry, I don't know if anyone is following it, Boeing, Airbus, uh, Bombardier. And you know, Bombardier is producing a new plane, like the C-Series, and they were kind of going on their own, facing some challenges with Boeing. And all of a sudden, Airbus came in to get a portion of Bombardier. So Airbus would be basically helping Bombardier to produce that and be able to compete again with uh, Boeing on that point. Yeah. The C-Series is about 100, 100 seats, uh, airplane, okay? Yeah. That one yeah, this, this is a, and, and one thing that I want to highlight, we frame this in 10 principles, but please, this is not, this is not by the book, okay? This is not by the book. Well, let me give you, if you see that you learn fast, fail fast, and this is about resources, we're talking that 9 and T, 
resources. So how do I get this sorted out? I don't know, but maybe can I outsource the manufacturing? Can I improve the outsourcing in this? I don't know on that business. But one thing that I know is that Tesla is new on this marketplace, comparing with the others that are extremely competent on production. Maybe they are not so innovative, but they know how to do things. So this is the biggest challenge they face today. So uh, I'm, I'm just using this as an example to you. So when you grow, you start facing other things. But what happened and why many, I, I want to highlight one, one final thought because we, b before we wrap up. Uh, one thing that for me, I, I look, uh, in the past, if you remember uh, 1999, 1998, I invested in some startups at that time. You remember that everything that you have with a dot-com website was worth a million. It doesn't matter what is inside, but it's worth. So at that time, I started doing something. So I work, and, and I'm going because we have, I, I'm, I'm a venture capitalist on one company that is based in Denmark, that is based on artificial intelligence. And, and what is the great thing? Startups are very fast, very smart. But the biggest challenge of a startup is, is to grow fast, but in a structured way. And the third problem, big, big problem, is that most of the owners of the startup, over time, they become blindfolded. They cannot see because they love their product so much that you know you are dying and then you say let's die together there is still a chance <laughs> and then no trust me from my heart at some point you need to dissociate you and your startup and say look this did not work let's move on and let's have another idea but people, most of the time, it, it's like old companies. You, you get so attached that you cannot see the fail. You say, no, it's still a great idea. It's still a great idea. If you talk to the old guys of Blockbuster, they still think that you should buy a, D, uh, a VCR. You know, it, but, it's, but uh, let me tell you, it's, it, it happens with everybody. It happens, but you need to be mindful of that. Does my solution still make sense? Because right now, we are having such a high pace of transformation. So I said about the computer, uh, Uber, you know, uh, I, I didn't tell you this, but I, I want just to highlight one, one thing that I heard recently is that Uber is a disruption by itself, right? It's, it's a different way and it's, it's very impactful on people's life and jobs, right? Taxis and everything. But now, uh, I, I was uh, uh, reading and I saw two days ago a blockchain uh, seminar, and they're talking about the use of blockchain that is able to connect the driver and the user without Uber. So it's a disruption of a disruption. It means Uber is becoming old. So people, uh, imagine now you are a regulator, a legislator. You are trying to figure out what to do with Uber. And then the guy said, no, Uber, don't, don't, I don't care anymore. And now it's, you know, it's like blockchain. I'm, I'm just saying the disruption is becoming in such a high pace that you need to be able to adapt yourself. And then I want just to, my last, last comment is about the, the adapt. Okay, here, develop robust plan and, and allow me steps, not, not the fail, but develop a robust plan. Yes, you need to develop, but you need to be able to adjust over time. A strategy is not a paper that is in permanent ink. So you do a paper with a lot of assumptions. If something changes, you need to go back and say, does this still make sense? I was talking to my daughter, 18 years old, she studies in London. And, and she, of course, she asked me about future. Oh, what, what, what's the trend of, uh, uh, you know, how I can make money in the future? I'm saying survive and this. Do you know what was my advice to her? It's you need to build a strong foundation that are parts of your strategy that will never change. These are your ethical values, principles, and your knowledge. And then on the top of that, you need to be extremely flexible 
to work on different industry because maybe the industry you think today may not exist. Oh, you say, I want to work in bank. Maybe banks will be obsolete 30 years uh, from now because it's all blockchain. I'm, I'm just using, or maybe, you know, we don't know how things will work in the future. So, and, and this, and then going to your company is absolutely the same. You need to have some core principles, but you need to be fluid to understand what is the problem you are trying to solve and implement. And if you see, for example, Tesla, if Tesla sees that everybody is going to this affordable market, maybe it's time for them to revisit and say, Let's, let me tell you, I will be just a premium brand. Because, for example, I lived four years in Copenhagen. So four years. In Denmark, Tesla is very fancy. I'm saying it's very fancy means uh, it's cool. You know, it's cool. You have a, a Tesla. It's a symbol of status. I'm saying not, not just economic, but it's a symbol that you care about the environment. You, are, you know, it's cool. And you see a lot of them. So maybe they should, you know, try to re refocus. I don't know. But they need, because if they continue doing that, they will be that very soon. So this is the takeaway I want. So I want just to wrap up today uh, for the day. I want to thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's very nice. I hope you enjoy. Go to brightline.org. All this content is there. Just download and make the best use you can. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>